Hello there, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Capri vlog. Uh, that's Cat, my Mark III for Capri. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. A few jobs to do on the Capri. Um, I've been tinkering with those sorts of bits and pieces. There's also loads and loads of stuff to do in the garage in terms of uh, tidying up and that sort of stuff. But I thought we've just done a couple of episodes of Cat Meets um, and I had to go off in the TIE Fighter. So I think today, instead of using it as a camera stand, we're going to do a very, very brief um, video on my Honda CRZ, my daily driver, short video. So welcome to another episode of Cat Meets and this one is Cat Meets the TIE Fighter. Very briefly, there is another car uh, on our driveway. Obviously, the family wouldn't fit in one. The other one I don't want to be driving as a daily. Um, so there it is. You might have seen it already. It's a Vauxhall Insignia. I won't go on anymore about that. <laughs> but that's like the other car that we've got. So what we're going to do is we'll have a real brief look over this. As I said, it's only a short video, guys. Just a bit of a rundown of my daily, just purely for the fact that I've been stuck in the house. I haven't been able to go out and stuff recently. So I thought I'd do this as a little bit of a video. I did go out in the TIE Fighter um, to do some videoing with Michael and with Lee uh, on the previous two episodes of this series. Um, so I thought it might be nice just to have a real brief look over. So what we'll do is we'll have a real quick run around the outside, we'll have a quick look around the inside, then I'll show you in the engine bay. So the outside styling really, I think this back quarter especially, comes very, very close to the old Insight, um, which I'll pop a picture up of. It was kind of like early 90s, I think, something like that. Something that a lot of um, sort of Hollywood celebs and stuff sort of picked up on um, and seemed to be running around in um, and features in a film. What was it called? Too Cool, I think it was called. John Travolta in it. I'll have a little look. Um, but the back end, obviously, back window and stuff especially, kind of bringing back, sort of, harping back to the days of the old CRX. But it definitely isn't a kind of a performance wagon like the CRX was, <coughs> particularly. Um, and then again, the side profile, I think, is sort of that as well, sort of CRX-esque. Um, quite a nice front end, I think, quite a nice nose. Um, bit of an odd-looking sort of car something. It's al almost like a, a miniaturised, stylish version of a Civic, I think, but that's, um, <laughs> that's for you to decide. <laughs> Quite a nice running lights in the in the headlights and stuff. Um, and these are the standard alloys and things. It is literally all standard. I bought it as a work run around and that's literally all it does. It just blasts two work and back for myself and my wife um, every single day. The front is horrendously badly um, stone chipped. Um, and you can even see a couple of spots of rust coming through on the bonnet and things. Just, um, I'm just hoping that everything sort of lasts us long enough as I kind of run it into the ground. It's a fairly nice looking car, I think, for, for kind of what it is. Let's have a little look inside. So I know I said I cleaned it, but the Hoover is not working at the minute, <laughs> which is awesome. This is why I call it the TIE Fighter, because when you sat inside it, it does feel quite nice. I'll go and have a sit in and show you that again in a minute, but it's quite a nice, spacious interior in the front here. Lots of space for both of us. Um, we've got aircon and all the mod cons, that sort of stuff. There is an option for the GT model, I think, to have leather seats, but also it's got um, Bluetooth connectivity and, and sat nav and that sort of stuff. But the back is just nothing at all, non-existent. Um, we did once have four adults in this car for a, maybe a half mile trip. It was very, very cramped. It can be done, but it is not advisable by any stretch. Um, but I mean, the back seats are, are fairly close to the front of the back wheel um, and you're quite close to the ground. It feels quite low down, quite kind of semi sporty in terms of how high you're kind of sat and stuff. But, but for two people up front, um, it is um, ample, if not comfortable in terms of size and that stuff. So also not huge, but big enough for um, spare wheel stuff, a bit of shopping, blah, blah, blah. Love that. But then where the car really comes into its own is the driver's seat, the driver's position, where you're sat, what it looks like and that sort of stuff, I find. And I think it's a really comfortable place to sit. And something that um, really jumped out at me is just the fact that it's a, it's a very, very small car. It's, it's smaller than your standard hatchbacks, but it feels really, really planted um, and solid on the road, especially on the motorway, very surprisingly quiet and nice on the motorway. As I do quite a lot of motorway miles, one of the main reasons why I really like this car for that sort of stuff. But sat in here, some dashboards kind of wrap around you a lot more. I mean, especially kind of Mark IV Super and things like that, but it doesn't quite do that. But for a small car, it's got quite a nice feel in here in terms of where everything's planted. I'll, have, I'll show you that now. I'll flip the camera in and show you that now. So you can see it's sort of planted around you a little bit. Obviously radio, um, aircon bits and pieces. Over here, you've got your lights and mirrors and stuff like that. But then also you've got these eco buttons, normal and sport. Um, and then in the center of the dash, you've got bits and pieces on the steering wheel. I think on all models, you get all this stuff. And then you get phone connectivity as well on the GT model, I think. Um, don't hold me to that. 
but it's a really nice dashboard setup the way it looks and that sort of stuff i think um and the kind of getting in here with all these bright led lights when i was used to kind of an old uh, peugeot 106 and a 4k before that that's why i call it the tie fighter it just felt kind of nice and futuristic and, and quite nice but it really is a nice place to sit for quite a long time especially as i keep saying it's quite a small car and if you do press the sport button that all goes red which is mildly funky if you're into that sort of thing um the main thing is it's a hybrid so it's a 1.5 petrol engine integrated motor assist means that it's got a small motor which helps out under acceleration to try and drive the average mpg up that's the idea of it um, and it works quite well i've kind of averaged anything between 45 and 55 mpg and that's literally anywhere that's town driving up and down to the shops a little bit and then obviously the motorway miles i do for work that's, that's um that's everywhere but i can and have been able to drive that up to 65 if i've been absolute saint which i just don't do i should do more often really but i just can't be bothered it's very very boring so it can be very very good but this over here on the display is all to do with the integrated motor assist as you can see the battery uh, level there is just the main battery for the for the hybrid system and then underneath it you've got the charge and the assist so when you put your foot down that level goes right up to the top and then when you take off the accelerator it recharges the battery and then the scale kind of comes down there um, and then that battery as i say kind of fluctuates a lot so you can drain it in about 30 to 40 seconds if you're accelerating hard but it charges up in about the same sort of time so that's constantly moving up and down kind of as you're driving i think it's around about three three thousand rpm at 70 mile an hour it's fairly nicely geared and paced the sports button just supposedly tightens up the steering and the throttle response um, I mean, it hasn't got any gizmos like the old uh, Nissan GTRs and stuff like that, but it does feel very slightly different in here, but it's very, very kind of electronic, really. It's not, um, it's it's definitely not a driver's wagon. It, it makes a difference, I think, in terms of the battery usage and so obviously the power that it's putting in in sport mode. So it does actually seem to make a bit of a difference in terms of overtaking and stuff. Um, but the battery drains a little bit quicker and things like that. So, so yeah, that's the interior. Um, the one thing which is a massive pain, and you're probably looking at it thinking that it must be a massive pain, is that that bar in the center window goes right in the wrong place for seeing sometimes what you want to see. And these back windows, I mean, they're not even back windows, <laughs> really. So blind spots is a, is a bit of a thing. Let's have a look, look at the engine bay. I'm not going to bore you with this one too much. This isn't particularly exciting, but it's an IMA integrated motor assist Honda 1.5 litre engine i believe the in um, the insights come with a 1.3 um i believe it's around about 100 horsepower and then i think that the motor which is attached to the gearbox down there um is about 13 horsepower which doesn't sound massive but if you look at torque curves and power curves on cars the peak power when someone says that they've got 200 horsepower for instance is right at the top so you're looking like 5,000 rpm prime spot um whereas the 13 horsepower comes anywhere so if it stood still at the lights and you put your foot down it's got 13 instant horsepower on top of obviously everything in the engine but then also at 70 mile an hour at 3000 rpm you can put your foot down and it gives you a little bit of a push the best way i can kind of describe it is a bit of a is a small turbocharger but with no lag at all it's, it's instant power um if you've driven an electric car then it, it's only really comparable to that the motor in terms of where the power comes in and how it comes in but it really is instant and as i said it's only 13 horsepower so it's not masses but it gives you a little bit of a boost and it actually makes for a very very nice drivable car and i think on a daily basis blasting around town going up and down the the a roads and stuff you don't have to drop it down to do overtakes even though it's only a 1.5 petrol engine and things like that so it's a it's a really really nice drive so that's that it's my daily driver um i literally use it for getting to work and back and that is it um i did go to down to see lee and michael for the previous two cat meets episodes in it because cat was not was broken if you've been following along with the channel cat is now fixed and is back out up and running hopefully very soon we're going to get back out in the car um get more shots more videos and stuff like that there's loads of garage work coming up there's a few more cat meets videos I've already got penciled in and a few more people I'm in contact with as well. So loads and loads of stuff coming. I'm really sorry about the boring episode with the modern car, but it was just a brief one I thought you might like to see. Let me know if you did. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What I'll do is I'll leave you with a couple of videos. First of all, is I'll put you up an absolutely banging show, Retro Rise Gathering, which is at Sousley Walsh. That one will go right there. I'll put you up cat meets Natalie, which is my old Ford free shell right there. And then right here, there's going to be a little button. Hit that. It'll subscribe you to the channel. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope to catch you on a future one. Till next time. Drive safe.